It's interesting, you know, happiness in life is based upon false happiness. And life is based upon compassion. How much of our lives do we spend comparing ourselves to other people, other things, other situations? And then de- de- deriving our happiness from them. One of the things that will never happen on a permanent basis, on a sustainable basis, okay, on a sustainable basis, is happiness that comes from the result of comparison. Happiness is not external. How many of you have heard people say, certainly none of us in this room have ever said that, when this happens, I will be happy. When I achieve this, I will be happy. If I didn't have this malady or this condition, I would be happy. Once that's done, I would be happy. And the external, external forces that we're constantly comparing ourselves to. I remember somebody that had a very serious health problem. And I asked that person, would you be so depressed about your health element if every woman in the world had the same health element that you had? Right now? If every woman was born with the same health element that you had, would you do this? I wouldn't use these words, but in my mind I'm thinking, miserably unhappy. And there's an awakening that happens in you. It comes from within. It comes from within. I have a good friend of mine. A very good friend that I coach. As an inspiration to me, as I was coaching him, he went between coaching sessions, he went out with his family. They were doing four wheelers on a, down in northern Mexico with the guide. Finishing the ride, hits a rock, kicks it over, breaks his neck, second little bit down. Paralyzed from the chest pain. No ab muscles. The ab muscles are extremely critical. Both his arms, but no ab muscles. So what does he do? Creates the foundation. Creates the foundation on spinal research. He notices out there, all of a sudden he has a new set of eyes. He's starting to see things that he never saw before. And he notices that all these people that are getting paralyzed have chicken tops over this time. They have no ramps into their house. And they don't have the money to build it. So he says, let's create a foundation. Let's start helping these people to get newly paralyzed. And the research that's being done is so close to coming up with stem cell and other situations of how to regenerate spines. Let's take some of the money and put it into that. And I love to golf. I was a two handicapped golfer. I can't even get out and swing now. I can't invent something that allowed me to swing. So he invented this golf cart, three wheels on it. And he rolls it down to the Crosby down in California. He can roll it out on the golf course, and he's proven to the course that the weight of the wheels is less than two feet standing on it. There's less damage on it. So they allow him to ride his little cart up onto the, onto the green itself. It lifts him up, swings him out. He clubs it here and there. He his club, lifts him out, swings him out like this. And he's got it. Figured out somehow he can't quite get two hands on the club. That's his next project. But he can get it out like that and it'll swing it around and he can hit it. And I've seen him hit a drive doing it that. He's not whipping it. It's just with him. He can't move from up here. There's no ab, so it's just very kind of this loose swing on that thing. But he's active, he's living life, and he's participating in life, and he's loving life. And he's an inspiration. And I had a chance to go speak one time at a big gathering that he put together. And I get there, and the lady's speaking before me. Her and I were there. And uh, I come up to this lady, and she is, I will just see the lady, I'm old, 19 years old, young lady. She was on her way to a rock concert, Rolling Stones, if I'm not mistaken. The dad was driving. He happened to be home from work that day. He was driving, and she goes, Dad, I can't feel my feet. And he's all shaking out. You'd be all right. Dad's a little bit Dad, I can't feel my, my calves. What? Rub him. Dad's a little bit farther. Dad, I, I'm losing feeling in my thighs. All right, something's going on here. Let's get to the hospital. He carries on. By the time he gets to the hospital, he's all right to here. She's paralyzed from her down. And she sits there in this wheelchair. And she looks at her mouth with a skull. And she used to speak it before me. And so I come in there, and Lori and I come in there, and she was a big fan of the movie The Secret. Okay, and I happened to be in that movie. And she was so excited to see me. 
being so humbled by it, and you see just kind of how much a big difference that they made in their life, and all these kinds of things, and I'm down on my knees passing this over and it. And she goes out ahead of me, and she heals up, and she says, she said, well, first of all, she told me, she said, I'm scared about those feet. She said, you can it. You know, just do it. And she's talking a little bit hesitantly because it's hard to get her breath in. And she feels that kind of everybody. And she said, you know, I've always wanted to be a stand-up comedian, but I didn't think it would be like this. <laughs> and those were the first words. And then she said something with great wisdom that Roy and I learned to understand later, lately. And she said, you know, people come up to me and they look at what's happened and they look at me and they say, I'm so sorry. And she says, well, that's all right. Just don't let it happen again. <laughs> you know? And she had this marvelous sense of humor. And she did this phenomenal. She had everybody laughing and crying. And, and I had to follow her. So all of a sudden, my false happiness kicked in, you know. How am I going to do this with this? I'm comparing myself to her. You know what I mean? This is how this whole thing came together. But this power and this strength of false happiness, of really understanding, and we continue to place ourselves in these different areas, and really happiness and growth and everything comes from within. It can't come from outside. External forces do not create sustainable happiness. It's impossible. Which is a component of true prosperity. It's a component of true prosperity. You can't have sustainable prosperity without having true happiness or true gratitude. You can't have it. You wouldn't have sustainable prosperity without those elements. Just can't do it. 